Okay guys, here is a video. I'm just gonna go through um, these first six odd problems. Um, if you think you can try, like as I'm going through, like let's say I've gone over two of them with you and you're starting to feel more confident, try to do some of these by yourself because you're eventually gonna have to do that. Um, but if not, just go through this with me. I'd rather you see them done, start getting a, a hang of things and we'll practice this more next class. So remember when we're verifying identities, our goal is to get one side to match the other. And often there's one side that's a lot more um, simplified already than the other. Like when I look at this, like this is much more simplified. So I'm gonna work with the more complicated side, which is this side. So I'm gonna give myself some room. I'm just gonna draw a line. We're always gonna have an equals and then the sine squared theta is never gonna change over here. Well, let's see what I have over here. Um, we're gonna use our methods that we use from simplifying. When I look at this, I notice um, that I have a secant squared theta. So I'm thinking, hmm, I wonder if this is one of my Pythagorean identities. And it, it is. Um, secant squared um, theta minus one is the same thing as tangent squared. Well, I want to see if I can simplify this more. Um, I can't distribute anything. Let's see if I can change these into sines and cosines. Well, I know I can. I just want to see if that's helpful. And I notice I have cosine squared in the numerator or cosine squared in the denominator. That leaves me with a sine squared theta, and that's exactly what I have on this side. So once I get things, these things to be the same, I'm done verifying. Okay, let's do another one, number three. Um, we have some methods. We have um, Pythagorean identities, but I don't see any of those yet. Um, it's already all in sine and cosine. So we learned two new methods this past class, and one of them is factoring. So I'm going to see if I have a GCF. I'm going to factor, well, I'm going to leave this side, because to me that looks simpler, or something that's easier for me to try to match. And I notice I have a sine of theta in both of these terms. So I'm going to factor out that sine theta. Well, now I notice that 1 minus cosine squared, that's one of my identities. That's sine squared. Well, sine times sine times sine is sine cubed. And that's equal to this side. Okay, let's try number five. Um, I'm thinking I might get some identities. This side's definitely simpler, so I'm gonna mess with this side. I definitely think I'm gonna get some identities, but I, I don't yet. Um, I'm actually not gonna turn it into sines and cosines. I could, but I'm noticing that I have a cotangent squared and a cotangent squared in both of these, so I'm gonna factor those out. And when I do that, I have a cosecant squared theta or x here, and when I factor out the cotangent squared, I have a 1 left over. Well, now I'm going to see if I can use my Pythagorean identities. Cosecant squared x minus 1 is cotangent squared. Well, this is cotangent times cotangent times cotangent times cotangent, so that will give me cotangent of x to the fourth power which is what I have on this side. A little more confident, try some of these by yourself. Okay. We start getting a little more complicated now. Let's look at number seven. As Soon as I see fractions, I be, should be thinking, I need a common denominator. So I'm gonna multiply all of this over here by cosine over cosine. And this one I need to multiply by sine of theta over sine of theta. This is definitely the easier side. I think I might need a little more room. Okay, so if I multiply that across, I'm gonna get a cosine secant. Over sine cosine. Minus, it's gonna give me a sine squared. over a cosine theta sine theta. So now I'm going to combine. I've got a cosine theta secant theta minus sine squared theta. 
all over sine theta, cosine theta. Okay, hmm. When I look at this, I notice that secant is the reciprocal of cosine, or in other words, secant is the same as one over cosine theta. So if I have cosine theta times one over cosine theta, those are gonna cancel out. So if I rewrite this, I really have one minus sine squared theta over sine theta cosine theta. Well, one minus sine squared theta is a Pythagorean identity. That's gonna be cosine squared theta. And I'm gonna purposely write it like this because I'm running out of room. So cosine squared theta Well, the cosine over cosine, that's gonna go away. But I still have this cosine theta over sine theta. Well, that simplifies down to cotangent theta, which is exactly what I'm trying to get over here.